Well, they're going to have to score some points, and that's what Dan Reeves was saying yesterday. He thinks that they're going to have to score 24 points. They have Rodney Hampton back. They're going to have to be able to run the ball, play pass, take some shots at the thing. But I think they're also going to have to have some big plays from their defense and their special teams. The Cowboys have won the toss. Daloiso will kick it off. A loud crowd. Kevin Williams downs it in the end zone. I don't think I've ever heard this crowd as into it and as loud as they are today. Troy Aikman, the Cowboy quarterback. In front of him, that strong, big offensive line. Frank Cornish instead of Stepnowski. And those who handle the ball, for Aikman, Novacek, Harper, Irvin, Darrell Johnston, and Emmett Smith. First and 10 Dallas at their own 20. First series of the day. Smith. About eight. Stopped by Guyton. The giant defense. They've been strong all year long. Fox, Dillard, and Hamilton, the front three. Brooks back as one of the inside linebackers with Bailey. Lawrence, Taylor, and Miller on the outside. The secondary is Raymond Jackson. Guyton and Mark Collins. Second and two. And then Smith got eight on the first carry. Flag on the play as Smith comes close to a first down. Stopped by Stacy Dillard. Yeah, I was talking to Norris Turner, the offensive coordinator, just out in the hall before the game started, Pat. He says that what they're going to have to do is loosen that giant defense up and really start running Emmett Smith a lot early in the game. So he said they're going to give him a heavy dose of number 22 early. Offside, number 75, defense, lined up in the neutral zone, five-yard penalty, first down. Dan Reeves was talking about Emmett Smith yesterday, said he never seems to get tired. He just keeps coming back and coming back. You know, he's, he's so strong, and uh, you know, his legs are so strong, and he, and he runs so strong, and he has everything a great running back has to have. I mean, he has the, the vision, and he has the cutting ability, and he has the strength and the toughness, and anything you want in a running back, Emmett Smith is that guy. Pro Bowler Darrell Johnson was the man in motion eight. Pass complete to Novacek. The Cowboys plan to get him a lot more involved today, Novacek. Well, you know, last year when they had a lot more two tight ends, Jay Novacek caught a lot more passes. You see, he only has 40 this year, but the guy who picked up that slack was Daryl Johnston. They've really been, in fact, Roy Aikmo was saying last night that all year they've been mauling Jay Novacek. They just jump on him, grab him, do everything to him, but Johnston has been open more. Two tight ends this time, Nate Newton. Jump the count. Mark Tourney started backward, and then Newton jump. Ball start, number 71, offense. No snap, five-yard penalty, second down. Jimmy Johnson, the master, master motivator. Second and nine, make it. I'll tell you, Jimmy Johnson knows what he wants and lets his players know exactly what he wants. And they're, they're a top organization. I mean, they have a plan for everything. Aikman to throw it. Outside to Darrell Johnson. Picked up about four. The Giants converge quickly. Myron Guyton was the first man there, led by or helped by Mike Mark Collins. Bill Sims. Yeah, that's probably the longest thing. You know, you come out, you get warmed up, you go in, you have the introductions, the, the crowd's all fired up, it's the biggest game of your season, and you have to stand over in that sideline waiting to get the ball, and you know you're playing against a team like the Cowboys that have so many weapons, you just hope you get a big third down play on defense. Aikman back quickly. Outside to Smith. Not quite enough for the first down. Jesse Armstead was the nearest giant defender. 
Smith indicating to the sideline they need about six inches. And Jimmy Johnson has his biggest decision early in the game, and he's already made it, Pat. He's not going to take a chance here on fourth down. He's going to punt it. John Jett in the kick for Dallas. Back deep, the dangerous Dave Megan. Giants only had 10 guys on the field. Now they have 11, so they're ready to go in their return. Jet hasn't had to do a lot of fun. Gets it out. Mega signals fair catch. And the Giants will take over at their own 24. No score. The Giants' first drive coming up. We'd like to show you our new Achieva Special Edition. The Giants have the ball, led by Phil Sims at quarterback. An outstanding year for Phil. In front of him, it'll be Jumbo Elliott, starting after problems with a bad back at left tackle. They need him. Robert Oaks, Cratchit, Riesenberg, the rest of the offensive line. Rodney Hampton, who did not play in the first game against the Cowboys down at Texas Stadium. Jared Bunch, Calloway, Jackson, and Cross. Sims. Been a very, very good year for Phil. Hampton. Slung down by Norton and Dixon Edwards. The front four for Dallas left and place of Haley. Maryland Casillas and Tolbert. Smith, Norton, and Edwards, the linebackers. And the secondary, Larry Brown and Kevin Smith, the cornerbacks, Everett, and Woodson, the safety. Second and seven, Hampton got three. Bob Cratch might have moved a little bit early. Yeah, that's what you get in a Both big game. Sides, number 61. Offense. Yeah, we saw the Cowboys. Second down. We saw the Cowboys jump early on their first possession. Now the Giants. I mean, everyone gets fired up. You know, you want those offensive linemen. Okay, come on, guys. We got a pancake and we got to go. We got to go. And then the first hard count they hear, and that's what Sims gave was a hard count. Here, here's put. You know, and those guys, they're just ready to go. I mean, the first thing that can set them off is going to set them off, especially early in a big game like this. Second and twelve, make it behind Sims this time. There, here's was the man in motion. Sims looking at Megan. Now looks the other way. Has his tight end, Aaron Pierce. Fumble. And I think the Giants got it back. It's going to be shaky. From the sides, it looks like the Dallas got it back. An official without a cap pointing towards Dallas's way. Great read by Sims, though. He had Megan to the left. He has Pierce to the right. You see him look to the left and then come back to Pierce. Now, in looking at Megan, that took that safety out of there, and that led Aaron Pierce right down the middle, and he just got that ball stripped out of there. Megan went for it, didn't get it, and the Cowboys came up with it. Darren Woodson came up with it. So Dallas takes over at about their own 40. Call it the 37. That was a big play for the Giants. It turned out to be a big play for the Cowboys. One of the things that both teams talked about yesterday is one that on defense they have to get turnovers, and the other side, but on offense, we can't turn the ball over. Cowboy first and 10 at the 38. And Aikman to throw it. He looked in the direction of Emmett Smith, the flag on the play. Usually when that guy throws it from that deep position, it's going to be against the tight end. Moving number 54, defense. Against Carlton Bailey. Automatic first down. See, that deep guy keys the tight end, and it's usually someone doing something to the tight end. And that's what Aikman was saying. He was saying, you know, last year it was a lot easier to get the ball to Jay Novacek. And 
Whereas when you get a guy like Nate and Jay Novacek who's in a Pro Bowl tight end, you know that he's going to draw a crowd. He says, they're just doing everything to him. They grab him every play. Johnston on the move. And he's going to throw it again. Michael Irvin. Irvin stays on his feet and gets to the Giants. 40 and a half. Greg Jackson was the defender. Hey, you watch Aikman here and again. A little play pass. And then look, look at this pass protection. The time that he has. And if he has time, this guy can get the ball in there anywhere. And the guy that he's going to look for most of the day is number 88, Michael Irvin. Harper comes right this time. Irvin is left. They go in a hurry. And Emma Smith is tracked down from behind by Keith Hamilton. I was talking to Jimmy Johnson before the game, Pat, and he says that in all the years that he's had Emmett Smith, this is his fourth year, he said he's never seen him as excited in practice as he was this week. He said he's never seen him get ready for a game. He said, you know, that's not one of his strengths, is getting ready and practice and all that. He said, but he practiced harder this week for this game than he has in any other game in four years of Cowboys. That's a pretty good tribute. Second and nine. Aikman outside to Darrell Johnson. Johnson bowling down to about the 32, stopped by Corey Miller. Maybe Aikman is going to feature the boost today. Now here's a guy that has meant so much to this Cowboy team. You know, he's the big play that the Cowboys run to Emmett Smith is that lead draw. Of course, the lead part of it is Darrell Johnson. And then he's the receiver part who's taken a lot of those balls that Jay Novacek used to get. In fact, he's made himself, you know, the blocker, the dink-off receiver all the way to the Pro Bowl. I talked to him Tuesday. I've never seen anyone so excited about being chosen for the Pro Bowl. An honor indeed. Everyone looks forward to Fridays. Delta Airlines, you'll love the way we fly. Oldsmobile, and by Coors Light, aged ice cold for that pure taste of the Rockies. Reach for the silver bullet, the right beer now. That Dallas timeout means they have two left in the first half. Third and short. Aikman fell down, gets to Smith. Smith has the first down. He almost fell down. Myron Guyton made the stop. You know, that's what makes Emmett Smith Emmett Smith. He, he almost always falls down, but doesn't fall down. You see, he's going to start here like it's going to go to the right and then cut it all the way back in here. And there's no one that does this better than Emmett Smith. See, he starts to the right. It's supposed to be up there in the middle. He feels something back here and then sees it, then makes that move. Almost falls, like he said, put his left hand down and still made the first down. Aikman will throw it on first down. Gets it out to Darrell Johnson again. Johnson is down, lost it, and Darrell Johnson got it back. At the 21, Mark Collins cut him down. Yeah, let's watch Lawrence Taylor, Pat, here, because one thing the Giants have to do is they're going to have to get some pressure on Troy Aikman. Now, one of the guys that, if he's going to come up with a big day, if he still has a big day left in him, it has to be Lawrence Taylor. I think he has to get there, just disrupt him a little. You're not going to get a lot of sacks. Make him throw it when he doesn't want to. Don't let him step up, all those kinds of things. That time, three of the Dallas blockers had a shot at Lawrence Taylor. They all took it. The last one, Emmett Smith. Lawrence Taylor does draw ground. To about the 15. Stopped by Bailey. Of course, Emmett Smith is going for his third consecutive rushing title today, so he'll know what he has, but Jerome Bettis of the Rams will also know what Emmett Smith has, and Bettis and the Rams will play later today. And Emmett Smith wants his win number one, but number two, he wants that third consecutive rushing title. First and ten at the 15. It's Smith again. Taken down by Myron Guyton, but he got four yards. 
Yeah, the one thing with the Cowboys, you always have to block that back side because you never know where it's going to go. You see, here he is here. Here's the onside. So you block that. But then the other thing the Cowboys do is they block this side equally as well because even though the onside is to the right, look at how that back side blocks. And you see those blocks there? Those are the things that make the cutback possible. Second and six. Galbraith in motion. Time, he doesn't get much. Stacy Dillard has Smith got just across the 10. Yeah, I always said, Pat, that the best friend of a quarterback is a good running back or a good running game. And now that the coaches call all the plays, I think the best friend of an offensive coordinator is a good running back because when you don't know what to call. You know, you, you always come somewhere where you have a blank. All you have to do is just give it down to Smith. Lead draw. And, of course, when you have an offensive line like this, you have another weapon. Galbraith moves over to the right side, third and four. Flag on the play, Aikman gets to Novacek. And about the five. I think that was big Eric Williams, the right tackle that moved. Ball start, number 79, offense. That was, Lawrence and I think he had to block on Lawrence two. Taylor. Four Watch, down. here's Lawrence Taylor here. Eric, er, Eric Williams is watching him, knowing that he has to block him. So he just takes a little rock there. You see, he just starts to get back there. Lawrence Taylor sees him rock and is smart enough to know if that guy rocks, I'm going to go because they're going to call him for the rock. That makes it third and nine. Emmett Smith has gotten the short game so far, but it's almost inevitable that before too long, he'll break one. Aikman back to throw it. Gets it to Fumble. And it got out of bounds. The Giants had a shot at it. The Cowboys maintained possession. You see Novacek gets by the linebacker right here. And then you see the hit and the fumble. And again, Armstead just can't hold on to the ball. He fumbles it. Now he doesn't have control of it, so it goes out of bounds. Now, the last team that had control was the Cowboys. So, of course, they maintain control and get the prime field goal. That ball doesn't look like it would be that hard to pick up. Yeah, but the football's the only one that doesn't roll. From 32 yards, Murray puts the Cowboys ahead. 437 left first quarter. First quarter. 437 left. Pat Summerall with John Madden. The winner is the NFC Division Champion. The Eastern Division Champion, I should say. Offside kick. Handled by the Giants by Jesse Arnold. Big play by Jesse Armstead there, Pat. Jesse Armstead was the guy that didn't get the fumble before it got out of bounds. But watch this. This is a gutsy call here. The onside kick. That front five, they always have to check the onside. Jesse Armstead didn't turn his back, didn't run back the block, but checked the onside kick first. It was a perfect kick right to him, and he handled it. I tell you, that's a big play. Really? Because a lot of young guys would turn and start to run backwards to block for the kickoff return. The first thing you have to do is check the onside kick, and he did. Actually, a pretty good onside kick by Murray, left-footed. Here's Sims with time. Finally had to throw it away as he was hit by Leon Lett. Well, he was trying to get deep to Chris Calloway, and again, this, this was one of those coverage sack type of things. It looks like Phil Simmons got, got banged up a little there. When Leon Lett gets on you, that's going to hurt. That's a load. But he does have time here, Pat. This is a bootleg. You fake going one way, you come back the other way. He had good time. He's looking deep. Chris Callaway was deep down the middle, but he had good coverage, and he had to hold the ball just so long, and Leon Lett got there. And punch. 
behind Sims. Halloway is the man in motion, and Sims will throw it again. Through the hands of Mark Jackson. But Phil Sims is thinking, what the heck does he have to do? He started, he hit Aaron Pierce on a beautiful play. Pierce catches the ball and then fumbles. Then he throws that one, a perfect pass there to Jackson, and he drops it. He thought he had Callaway. He didn't have time. Leon Lett got there. Bill Sims is doing his part. He certainly he has all year long. Hey, he's an amazing guy. 15 years in this league and still looks like he's been in it about five years. And talks like that. Back to throw it again is Sims. Chased by Jeff Coach. That's on Jumbo Elliott. You're going to see Jeff go right here. Here's Elliott coming back here. Remember, he still has that bad back. But watch Jeff go. Starts to the outside. Then they had a double team on him. Aaron Pierce left him a little too soon, and Elliott didn't stay with him. One of those things, sometimes you have two guys on one, and they both relax a little too much. And I think that happened on that play. All right. Back to five. to the Dallas game. Illegal block, number 51, on the return, half the distance to the goal, first down. And after the last Dallas game, it, Dan Reeves got rid of Sean Landetta, and That's he right. brought in Mike Horan. 3-0, 343 left in the first quarter. Oh, that SSCI is terrific. Yeah. Supercharged, traction control, ABS, dual airbags, leather. What a car. I told you. You were right. It's thousands less than the BMW or the Lexus. Well. The Cowboys three. The Giants nothing. Dallas ball at about their own 12. On the seven, beg your pardon, five further back. Outside the 10 to about the 12. Stopped by Brooks and Taylor. Troy Aikman, by the way, is 7 of 7 for 51 yards. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the amazing thing about Troy Aikman. Is he, you know, he, he's, he's so hot now and so efficient that, that that brings confidence. I mean, I think that right now he believes that he can throw any time any down distance to anyone and make it complete. Here's Smith again. To about the 16. Lawrence Taylor on the stop. Yeah, again, we talk about guys that are going to have a big game, have been in big games, have been the best that ever played, has to have a big game today. That's Lawrence Taylor. I, mean, I think when you talk about who's the best linebacker that ever played this game, I think it's this guy right here. Now, he's not that right now, but you wonder, does he still have one more in him? And if he does, the Giants hope they get it today. Aikman again fell down, and Smith comes out of the pack. And then Smith to about the 27. Right now for an NFL update, let's send you back to Greg Gumbel in our New York studios. All right, Pat, at the Silverdome, the battle for the NFC Central. The Packers turn a turnover into a touchdown. Brett Favre screen to Edgar Bennett, 39 yards. He'll dive the final few. 7-0, Green Bay, final minutes of the first quarter, Pat and John. 3-0 at Giants Stadium. Two minutes to go in the first quarter with the clock running. Yeah, that's, that's what a great running back does, Pat. I mean, they were backed up there. Then they just give it to Emmett Smith, and now they're out to the... 27-yard line already. Aikman to throw it. Irvin had it, and it was knocked away by Greg Jackson. 
and trying to find that seam in that double zone. See, Mark Collins is going to come up here, and he's going to make a bump, and he's going to force him to the inside. And then they're going to try and find that seam, that hole right between the corner, Collins had bumped, and Jackson the safety. And I think what happened, I think Urban went a little far, a little too far in because Jackson got there just when the ball did. Urban and Harper are split wide right this time. On second and ten, they get to Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith hit down by Eric Howard. Now here's the thing that the two deep we're talking about. You see, you have these two corners. They come up and bump here. The two safeties play deep. This is what the Giants use. So on that play, Urban was trying to come in and get in this hole here. He got a little too close to Jackson. But this is the thing that the Giants do better than anyone else. It's that loose, too deep zone, a loose umbrella, and that makes you go underneath. That's been their base defense for years. Here's Aikman. Out of the pocket, Aikman got the first down. It was against the Giants at Texas Stadium where Aikman got hurt on a scramble. That was one of the things that Keith Hamilton talked about yesterday. He says, we have to contain Troy Aikman. We can't give him lanes. Now, if you look right here, you're going to see where the lane is. You see right here, when they have the, the, the tackles to the inside, the ends to the outside, they gave him the lane. Now, Aikman isn't a big runner. I mean, it's not like you're playing against a Steve Young. But if you give him a lane, he has the talent and he will take it. him down. He was hit first by Eric Howard. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Dallas three, the Giants nothing down at the bottom. Sometimes that can come back to haunt you. Keep the ball all the time and only get three points. Yeah, and that's, and that's the thing that the time of possession is good if while you're possessing, you score points. If you possess and don't score points, it doesn't do you any good. Second and 12. Aikman looking, gets it to Smith. Smith dragged down by Corey Miller. There goes big Kevin Gogan going back into the game. You know, he something happened to his hat, and they had to they had to bring it over to the sideline. You don't see many guys misplaced because of their hat. But what happened is he broke the face mask on it. So they had to bring it back and they had to screw the side of it back into the helmet so it's protected. So poor old Gogan, he's, he's there walking on that lead drawing. He got his hat knocked off. You don't see a lot of hats that big. No, he has the biggest head on the Cowboy team. They call that thing the lunch bucket in his helmet. That drive straight ahead. Nothing there. North Turner says, he said they're going to get a heavy dose of Emmett Smith early. This is the 14th time that Emmett Smith has handled the ball running and passing. But here, the Giants win this battle. They stuff the line, they stuff the linebackers, and there's Eric Howard making the play. Howard Eric Howard. Fox. I was going to say, Howard is playing as well right now, Pat, as probably he has in three years. Well, he's over. He had all kinds of back problems. Those have gone. And he's playing with a lot of enthusiasm. Jets kick high. Megan signals fair catch. Makes it. The Giants will take over at their own 16. 13-29 left in the first half. We don't know where we'll be, but we'll be there. Yeah, it's going to be the Sunday game, and it'll be a wild card game. And we do know one thing. The loser of this game plays at home against the Minnesota Vikings. We don't know when or where, but we know that's one of the games. First and 10 Giants at their own 17. Sims back to Hampton. Tripped up by Casillas. 
Bears have to get some running game going. You know, they've only they've only run. That's the second time they've run. They only had three yards. Of course, they haven't had to had the ball a lot, but they. If they're going to do anything, they have to be able to run the ball, and they have to break some tackles. You know, last week against the Cardinals, they couldn't run the ball, but they didn't break any tackles. And the first guy that was there would tackle them all the time. Injured Cowboy down on the play is the defensive tackle, Russell Maryland. Dallas three, the Giants nothing. Still in the second quarter. Tom O'Keefe is in the grip of a really tough cold. Pat Summerall, John Madden, the Giants Stadium. The Cowboys leading 3-0 in the second quarter. Rodney Hampton, the deep back at second and nine. That was Megan in motion, and the reverse goes to Megan. on the stop. There's Russell Maryland who was injured earlier. There's Russell Maryland, Pat. They're checking his Achilles tendon. And I'll show you what happened. Here's Jumbo Elliott. Right here is Russell Maryland. He starts to ride in here. Jumbo Elliott clips him from behind. Now this is really an illegal block. If we just look at it and click it. See, he's engaged there. See him engaged there? Now watch right there. See, Jumbo Elliott comes right back and gets that right ankle or right Achilles tendon. That is tough. Third and four, Sam is back to throw. Standing around the time now, chased by Jim Coat. Finally threw it away. Hit the yard line marker. Sims went down, chased by Jeff Coat and Casillas. You know, this Dallas Cowboys secondary is doing a good job of coverage because that time, Phil Sims really had time there. And if you just look at the coverage that this secondary is doing, you see he's looking, we can stop it now, we can see that everything is covered. There's no one open. And he had to wait and wait and wait because he did have good pass protection, but none of his receivers got open. So Mike Horan is in to kick. Kevin Williams back deep for Dallas. This is where he can use a good directional punt outside the numbers. Let it bounce. It bounces sideways and is out of bounds. And Dallas will take over in pretty good shape about their own 42. 3-0. Russell Maryland, problem with his right ankle, and they're in the process of retaping that right now. Yeah, that's a tough one that he got there. You know, when you're playing one guy, he was playing Roberts, and then Jumbo Elliott come from behind and, and got him right down on that ankle. With all that Jumbo Elliott 310 pounds on one ankle joint is kind of tough for a defensive tackle to take. Fake is the snap to Aikman throws to an open Michael Irvin. Greg Jackson knocked him out of bounds. 22-yard pickup. Now here's where they could work it. You know, we talk about this double zone. We'll see this. We'll see the safety come over. Now there's a hole right in here. And that's the area that Michael Irvin's going to go in. You see the rotation, but he didn't get a good bump. Now, see, because you don't get a good bump, look at this big hole that you have here. Michael Irvin sees it. More importantly, Troy Aikman sees it. Here's Emmett Smith inside the Giant 35, a pickup of perhaps three, stopped again by Eric Howard. Yeah, that's the thing that this Cowboy team can, can do to you. I mean, they can pound you and pound you and pound you with Emmett Smith. Then you think he's going to stay inside. Then he bounces outside. Then they could throw the ball to him. Then they could throw it to Johnson and Novacek underneath. Then you always got Michael Irvin outside. And then if you say, okay, we got all that, they have Alvin Harper, whoever, every now and again, they'll just go deep to him on a bomber. Aikman back to throw it again. Drops it out to Emmett Smith. And Emmett Smith goes inside the giant 30. Corey Miller and Carlton Bailey converge to bring him down. And that's where they're so good. You know, we were just talking about there where they pound Emmett in there and they get that middle clogged up so they can't get him in there. So instead of going away from Emmett Smith, they say, okay, 
We can't get them in that middle. They're closing up that middle. Eric Howard's playing well in there. Brooks is coming up and so on. So now they just dump it to the outside to him and let him run around everything. Third and four. Dallas is three out of six on these third down conversions. And they'll go with two tight ends. And now Aikman decides whatever it is they want to go with, he doesn't like. So it's a Dallas timeout. They'll have one left in the first half. Three nothing. At the Giant Stadium. Yeah, you Jum can tell the Jumbo Elliott is having trouble there with his back, Pat. I mean, just just trying to sit down or, or sit up or whatever is, is making him cringe. You have to pain. sit the bench and hold on with both hands. It's tough. Yeah. That's a bad sign. Being consoled by Bart Oates. Kevin Williams in the slot. Flag on the play. Gets it to Emmett Smith. down to about the 17 he was down the ball came loose mark collins up to hit him i think that's going to be good for a first down i think the penalty is against the giants you know i've always been against throwing short when you have third down against throwing short of the first down marker but if you throw into emmett smith i think it's okay you got a pretty good chance of him getting whatever you need yeah because 75, defense, penalty is declined, first down. That's the second one on Keith Hamilton, number 75 is here. The, the, the first one, they had him for lining up in the neutral zone. This time they have him for jumping offside, but that didn't look like 75 Hamilton, that looked like 74 Eric Howard. I think it looked like he got, got that on the snap count or the hard count. Smith. And he gets inside the 15 to about the 13. Stopped again by Eric Howard. Uh, you wonder if, if everything in its simplest form offensively and Jimmy Johnson's offense here is you start off and you're going to have hand it to Emmett Smith and throw it to Michael Irvin. And in the first half of this game, that has just about been the offense of the Dallas Cowboys. There are a lot of decisions you don't have to make when you have those two. Especially when you have a guy like Aikman getting it to him. Fake is to Smith. Hamilton chasing the Aikman incomplete. Third and perhaps is the nearest Cowboy receiver. Yeah, good coverage by Corey Raymond. Watch Corey Raymond here. He's going to be man-to-man -man on Michael Irvin. Now, now that's who Aikman's trying to throw to. Now, Irvin, I don't know what kind of pattern he's running. Now, Corey Raymond does have a little grab of that jersey, but Aikman didn't look like he knew the ball was coming to him. And if he did know, he should have ran a better pattern than that. Third down. Three wide receivers. Williams in the slot. Aikman back to throw. to first. David Tate made the stop on Emmett Smith. You know, the other part of that equation is hand it to Emmett, throw it to Michael. The other part is if you don't want to throw it to Michael, throw it to Emmett. So you can either hand it to Emmett, throw it to Emmett, or throw it to Michael. That's not bad as long as you got those big guys up front blocking for all that stuff, and they are doing that. They're going to measure.
the bottom of the pile. Again, you just see Emmett Smith, the deep guy, Daryl Johnson getting a good lead block there. And that's the soft spot. He went right in there at Michael Brooks. Johnston got it. That's why that's why he's in the Pro Bowl. That's why Emmett Smith, or one of the reasons that Emmett Smith was a leading rusher in this league. First and goal at the five. Albert and Wilson. Smith got nothing. Well, you know, Dan Reeves is concerned here. I mean, he would love to see a field goal by the Cowboys here. His giant team stop him and make him go for a field goal because one of the things he was worried about yesterday is getting behind early. He said down there in Dallas, that's what did him in. You know, when they got down 17-3, to three, the Giants are not a good team playing uphill. They've run it to him, he's running right, left, inside, outside, they passed it to him. This guy has done everything a running back can do. Look, the blitz is on, they don't get a good coverage on Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman makes a perfect throw. Murray for the extra point, Novacek holding. Murray's kick is good and Dallas leads 10-0. 7.26 left to play in the first half. Emmett Smith comes inside and goes right in that hole where the linebacker blitz from. See, there's the blitz. Emmett Smith goes, boom, right there in that same spot, and he catches his first touchdown of the season. There goes another ball for number 22 into his collection. Into the trunk, and they'll lock it up. I tell you, this whole first half, that could be a collection for Emmett Smith. You talk about a pro football player showing you what a pro football player is in the NFL that's what Emmett Smith is doing an all-pro football player well the best I think that, you know, that these kind of games these big games are what it's all about I mean you know you you go you're 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 going to you'll get the playoffs you're going to get the home field you're playing for the division you're playing for everything and big players come up big in big games Sails to make it five yards deep in the end zone, and he will not bring it out. Pro Bowl selections for the 1993 Cowboys, Aikman, Smith, Irvin, Novacek. Offensive lineman Williams, Newton, Mark Stepnoski, who will be operated on next Tuesday. Obviously, he won't play in the Pro Bowl. Marilyn, Norton, Thomas Everett, and Darrell Johnston. That's a representation. I mean, you get 11 guys. I mean, that's like playing, that's what the Giants said. It's like playing an all-star game. You get 11 Pro Bowl players on the Cowboys. Hit by Lynn. Nothing there. There's Mark Stepdowski. You know, he had a, a deal in his contract that if he was voted to the Pro Bowl, he would become a free agent at the end of this season. So he got that injury, and then he started worrying about whether he was going to be voted to the Pro Bowl or not. He injured that knee. He's out for the season, but he was voted to the Pro Bowl, so he will become a free agent. Macias jumped. to point to Callaway. Casillas, and that's where the Giants needed. Number 75, defense, penalty is declined, first down. Yeah, not a guy, not a guy jumping off sides, but just a guy making a play, a guy making a catch. I mean, you know, Sims gets back, he had good pass protection, Callaway makes a good sharp cut out there, Sims hits him perfectly. The Giants don't need a lot of things going, they just got to start making some plays now, start getting some first down, and get into a rhythm. The handoff is to Hampton. Hampton is 
hit after about a three-yard pickup for another NFL update. Let's go back to Greg Gumbo in New York. Pat John at the Silver Dome. Detroit pulled even on Eric Lynch's five-yarder. All kinds of room off right tackle. It's a 7-7 tie at the Silver Dome in the second quarter. Back to you. At Giants Stadium, it's 10-0 Dallas. and they got that good push to the left side. We saw the first run to the left side. Now we watch the second one. Trap play, boom, good trap by Roberts there. Hampton's right in behind it, runs right off the trap block. Giant first and 10 at their own 48. Hampton behind Sims, and Hampton will carry again. Taken down by Tony Tolbert. Got a yard, maybe. Yeah, someday, you know, you talk about great running backs, we know that Emmett Smith is, and a year ago, Rodney Hampton was a Pro Bowl player, and I've always felt that when a running back plays against another great running back, he wants to show his best, too, and I know that Emmett Smith so far has the upper hand. I mean, he's done yep. everything that a running back has to do, and Rodney Hampton wants to show his stuff now. You know, I'll show you what a running back can do. Second and nine. Across the 50 to about the Dallas 48. Leon Lett tripped him up. Yeah, we saw the one trap. Now we trap from the other side. This time it's going to be Cratch here. Cratch pulls this way. Hampton gets right in behind him, and you want to run right off that trap block. We saw Roberts do it to the right. Now we see Cratch pull. Boom, right there's a trap. Hampton right in behind him. Good play by Leon Lett. The trap worked, but they didn't get lead blocked. Here's him. Down by Tolbert. And Lett and Casillas. They all converge. And the Giants will have to punt. And Sims is really upset there because he didn't have a chance. I mean, here's the first one. Tolbert is going to get the first pressure, and then once Sims sees that, he puts the ball down, and then and then the whole thing becomes a jailbreak. But see, Tolbert's the first guy right there. Tolbert was the guy that made him bring the ball down, and there was Leon Letton to see him. Cowboys were coming after Horan. And a good roll on the end of the kick. All the way down to the 10-yard line. nothing it looked like the ball sort of slid off the side of the foot of Mike Horan but he got a good bounce maybe that's how you get directional kicking yep. is, uh, you just slide the ball off your foot the Patriots beating Miami the Dolphins having all kinds of problems and New England playing better each week Kansas City 24-3 the Cardinals playing well of late. Green Bay has taken a 10-7 lead over the Lions. The Giants have good field position here defensively, but they have to make a stand. They have to stop the Cowboys and make a punt here and get some good field position. And that's Smith. Looking for room, cut down by Corey Raymond. Good tackle. Now, but the secondary is making too, way too many tackles on Emmett Smith. You know, how many tackles have the defensive line made on Emmett Smith? They're not going to make a lot, but the linebackers have to make more tackles because the more tackles the secondary makes means that the ball carrier is running farther and farther into the defense. Those linebacker tackles are sort of the key to this giant defense also. And they haven't been doing it today, and they didn't do it last week against the Cardinals. Second down. Smith again. He lungs up field for about three, stopped by Lawrence Taylor and Stacy Dillard. You know, if you look here, Pat, so far Emmett Smith has been tackled five times by the first guy that hit him, five by the second, eight times it was the third guy, and five times it was four or more. 
So the first guy has only passed with him five times. 18 carries, 63 yards. They need two. and tackles and watch him go right there on the right shoulder see right here he puts his right arm down and then goes on the right shoulder and that's what they're checking Smith has 19 carries 109 yards now Lincoln Coleman has replaced him Aitman Smith and everything goes. I mean, it, here they come. Keith Hamilton. He gets a penalty on that play. But the big thing was 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 that he got by his guy. That he got into the backfield. That he got pressure on Troy Aikman because that's really the first pressure the Giants have had on Troy Aikman. And it's ironic. It's the first play that Emmett Smith isn't back there because when Emmett Smith is there, you always have to worry about that run. So you just can't key off on the on the quarterback. The word on Emmett Smith is that he does have a bruised right shoulder. Don't know if he'll be back. That's Lincoln Coleman who replaced Emmett Smith straight ahead. Now we got the answer right now, Pat. There's Emmett Smith going back into the game and. Look at the fans don't like that. The fans know what Emmett Smith has done to him. Look, he has 151 yards already. So when they see him coming on the field, the fans kind of went, oh, no. I mean, it's just kind of, you know, the air goes out of you. Yeah. <laughs> that type of thing when he came back out there. Second one man game. Here's Aikman. Gets it out to Darrell Johnson. Johnson, a Dallas first down at about the 22. Tripped up by Corey Raymond. Something Simon shows how big Daryl Johnson has gotten. He, you know, they call him the Moose, of course. That's his nickname, the Moose. He's a pro ball now. But usually you just get your nickname called when you play at home. Daryl Johnston gets his nickname called when he plays on the road. That is big. Smith behind Aikman, but Aikman will throw off Donnist and over. Check down to about the 16. Stopped by Mark Collins and Michael Brooks. To get you with this Dallas Cowboy team, you know, you say, what do you stop? You know, you stop Emmett Smith, they hit Novacek. You stop Novacek, they hit Irvin. You stop Irvin, they, they hit Harper. This offense drives coaches crazy. And they've had the ball almost the entire first half. Here's Aikman throwing again. Johnson incomplete. Seconds left. Dallas with one timeout left. Don't forget to stay with us at the half. Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights and New Year's resolutions. Be careful. Dallas out of the huddle quickly. Third and four. 20 seconds before halftime. One time out left. Aikman, nowhere to go. Down he goes. At the 20. With 14 seconds left to play in the first half. And that's another coverage sack there, Pat. I think he was trying to get to Michael Irvin right here, and you'll see Irvin get down in there deep. And there's too many Giants on him. 
You see Irvin there, he got a double team right there. Jackson and Guyton both on him. That's who Aikman was looking for. This is what happened. Now here's how Aikman sees it. See, he's looking down, he's looking for Irvin, looking for Irvin, looking for Irvin, waiting, getting up, no chance. Emmett Smith heading for the locker room. There's Russell Maryland who injured his ankle earlier, waiting in the tunnel. Dallas uses their last timeout. They lead 10-0. Three seconds to go and Murray's in the game. presents an exciting debut, Pink Plus, a new installation that's silky to the touch. The reason? Pink Plus is our famous pink fiberglass insulation wrapped in smooth pink poly, which also makes it extra easy to install. So get in touch with the premier installation. For the Pink Plus dealer nearest you, call 1-800-GET-PINK. That is... yard field goal effort coming up by Eddie Murray. Novacek holding. It's good. The kick is plenty long enough. And straight down the middle. That is the end of the first half with the score. The Cowboys 13. The Giants nothing. turn Dallas leading the Giants 13 to nothing at the half Thanksgiving the National Football League is sponsored by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1994 Lincoln and Mercury automobiles Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler Cellular One clear across America and by MasterCard it's more than a credit card it's smart money Time statistics, as you would expect, lean entirely toward Dallas. 13 first downs to two. Time of possession, 22 minutes, 24 seconds for the Cowboys. 7.36 for the Giants. And look at the rushing yardage and passing yardage and, John, the pass distribution. Well, that's the thing that the Cowboys have. You know, they have so many weapons. You can see that Emmett Smith, they threw to him six times, 42 yards. Michael Irvin three times for 40 yards. The rest of the team, they've thrown seven out of nine for 44 yards. So one thing, you know, that we talked about before the game, that Troy Aikman is so efficient, and he has so many good guys to throw to. But again, I say the guy that make it all possible is that offensive line, and they've done an excellent job of both run blocking and pass protecting this first half. Eddie Murray set to kick it off. Dave Maggot and Chris Calloway back deep. Line by and kick by Murray. Handled by Maggot at about the 15. And he gets outside the 30, about the 32, where the Giants will take over. You know, one one good news for the for the Giant fans here, and the you know, bad news for the Cowboy fans anywhere, is that I don't see Emmett Smith out on the field. Uh, you know, he hurt his shoulder just before halftime, uh, went in just before the field goal was kicked. We got word that they wanted to look at it. They thought it was a shoulder bruise, but he's still in the uh, locker room. They x-rayed Russell Maryland at the half. We are left defensive tackle. Howard Cross made the reception from Sims. That's his third completion of the day. And he gets about nine, maybe a little bit more. And the Giants just have to come out and get a new start here. Remember, early in the game, they hit that one to Aaron Pierce, and then he fumbled the ball, and I think that took all the air out of him. And then they caused a fumble, and they didn't get it. They had a couple opportunities in the first half. They lost them, and then they never got back. So maybe the second half, they got to start over the way they started to start in the first half. They need about a foot for a first down. Word from the Cowboys is that they're trying to put extra padding in Emmett, Sh Emmett Smith's shoulder pads, and he's going to try to go. And the same thing is true of Russell Maryland. They're putting extra padding on his, on his ankle. 
And he'll give it a go in a moment. You know, one of the problems the Giants have had, they've had a lot of problems offensively, but one is not gaining much yardage on first down. In fact, that play was the first time that they gained over four yards on first down in this game. They need about a half yard for a first down. Rodney Hampton is the defense. He will get the first down. Up to the 45. Stopped by Casillas and left. This is what you want to do. You want to get right in behind Roberts and right in behind Jumbo here in the running game. That's where it goes. You need a first down. They start to double on Lett. That was the soft spot that Rodney Hampton ran right into. You see, if you know where your double team is, then that's where you're going to expect to get the soft spot. That's where Hampton got it. Cowboys 13, Giants nothing. First and 10, the Giants. Will throw it on first down. Gets out in the direction of Aaron Pierce into play. Second and long, and that's the situation they don't want to be in coming up. And they're trying to get in the mixture. They're trying when you know to get out of that thing where you run on first down all the time. So they're trying to go some passing on first down, but those short passes that get you five or six yards. I'll tell you one thing, the, the giant offensive line so far has not done a good job. They haven't done a good job of run blocking, nor have they done a good job of pass protection. Aaron Pierce is the man moving. Seems to throw it. Gets it to Hampton at midfield. And that lunge takes him across midfield into Dallas territory, stopped by Norton. Now the Giants come in with their where third down offense. You can see Dave Meggett comes in. This is where they use McCaffrey, three wide receivers. Derek Brown is the fourth. He becomes a the tight end in there. Where's the guy they like to go to in this situation is Dave Meggett. And he's lined up to Sims right. Sims is showing him who to block if they blitz. Meggett comes out of the backfield. Pass almost picked off by Gant. Here comes Emmett Smith with that extra padding in place inside his shoulder pads. Yeah, again, it was his right shoulder. And, you know, you don't know if he's ready to play yet. I think the thing that tells you he's not is that his, his belt buckle's not buckled yet. I think the hat, you don't wear the hat that way and you tighten up that belt buckle. Punt is partially blocked. Williams hits it, and the Giants get it back. Kevin Williams trying to take it on the hop and lost it. And the we Giants get a break. That. And everyone's going to remember the Leon Lett play. They're going to say Thanksgiving Day. You don't have to do that. If the ball's flopping around on the ground, get away from it. Every special teams coach will tell you that. Again, you get the block. Here, it becomes a deflection. It's knocked off there. It, usually, if you can't feel it, if it's bouncing around like that, you just want to get away from it. I think Kevin Williams thought it was taking a pretty good hop and hopped right to him. But I'll tell you, that is a dangerous, dangerous thing when there's all those blue jerseys around. Jesse Armstead was shaken up on the play. Looks like a problem with his left leg. Kevin Williams, as you said, John, it looked as if it was going to take a good hop, but he tried to field it. It comes from the outside. They have the end split. Brock Marion comes in, flattens out as Mike Horan punts it. Boom, he hits it and knocks it to the sideways. Now, Kevin Williams is coming up. Looks like he was going to get away from it. Then he saw the bounce, tried to get it, and made a bad decision. Hampton on first down. To about the 32. Stopped by Norton. The Giants have to take control of this game, and if they're going to take control of it, I think Rodney Hampton has to be a big part of it, and the other big part of it has to be this offensive line. They're doing that right here. Pierce is getting a block. He gets the block on Haley. That gives them the soft corner. Larry Brown misses the tackle, and they're able to get about eight yards. Second and two. Hampton again. Spins and got about one. 
Darren Woodson made the stop. Uh, Jesse Armstead. Excuse me, John. I was just going to say that was a big turnover for the for the Giants as we see him working on Jesse's arm Armstead's left ankle there. Because this is the deepest penetration that the Giants have had today. It's been a frustrating day so far for Phil Sims. Third and one. Might just take a shot here. Rodney Hampton over a thousand yards from the third. Emmett Smith stuff. I'm going to show you some because I didn't feel that he was running hard last week. I didn't feel that he was running hard in the first half of this game, but on this play here, he ran hard. I mean, watch this. When he, you know, he hits that linebacker, Darren Smith, and knocks him backward. Watch Smith come off a block. Now watch the contact there. Smith goes backward. First down, Giants at the Dallas 27. Fake to him, and throw, incomplete, almost intercepted. I don't know why Phil Sims didn't throw it to Howard Cross. Howard Cross, he's telling Phil Sims right now, he's going to go tell him, Howard Cross was wide open. It was a bootleg, Howard Cross was out on the right side. Now, here's Cross right here, here's Sims, and I can see, it's probably because yep. of the defender there that he can't see him. See, and then that, that made him scramble, and not only scramble, but look to the other side and throw it where there were no blue jerseys. That was Tony Tolbert right in Sims' face, and you're right. That's probably why he didn't throw it. Second and ten. One thing, if you give Phil Sims protection, he's going to find some stuff. See Callaway, he's the guy in motion right there. And now the outside guy comes to the inside. Callaway goes to the outside, and Phil Sims hits him. Woodson, the defender. The only thing seven. is, these receivers somewhere, Pat, are going to have to break a tackle and make a play after they catch the ball. Well, the guy that can make things happen is to Sims' right. That's Megan. is caught by McCaffrey and a giant first down this is the guy McCaffrey here that's the guy that he's going to look for on third down Ed McCaffrey is a big wide receiver possession type guy he just runs a little out now where he did is by coming back he gave Sims something to throw to but again we talk about protection Dave Megan stays in to help that's where it all starts that was good pass protection for Sim. On first down, Hampton spinning and hit by Godfrey Miles. I'll tell you, they're hitting down there now. I mean, this is good hitting weather. You know, we talk about, you know, that first half, you're kind of positioning stuff. You come out in this, in this second half, and there's a certain finality about it. You know, I mean, you get all those speeches, one more half, one more half of the season, man. We've got to get it done. See, these guys are going after each other now. The applause you hear is for Rodney Hampton. They've just announced on the school board that he has just rushed for over a thousand yards. The third consecutive year. It's a giant record. Second down. Knocked down by Brown at about the five. Again, they have to make a play. They have to break one of these things. And you see Phil Sim. He has good protection. He's looking out there. Again, he throws that perfect pass to Callaway. See, if Callaway could have kept his balance there and broke back in, he's trying. He's trying to get that end zone. But if he could have kept that right foot there and planted and bounced it back into the end zone, that's what the Giants needed. It's first and goal at the five. As they were saying, you know, as all the Giants were saying yesterday, when we get down there, when we get down in this range, we need touchdowns, not field goals. Field goals won't do it against the Cowboys. And the Giants have taken a timeout. Bill Sims over talking to Dan Reed. Cowboys leading the Giants, but the Giants have it first and goal at the Dallas Five. They've just taken a timeout, so they have two left in the second half. 
Well, the Giants came out with a different determination here in this half. I mean, they've gotten, of course, they've had the ball more. They've had the ball longer, so you have time to do things. But this offense is a lot more aggressive now than they were in the first half. Hampton and Bunch behind Sims. Sims put his head to his helmet. And that could mean something. It means someone throw it back to him. Hampton's got to get knocked out of bounds after about two yards, two and a half. Right here, right here, right here. Dan Reeves there, one of the few head coaches that, that calls his own offensive plays. He has that sheet there, he's getting his goal line people in there. Remember last week they did have a run pass of Rodney Hampton to take it and run and then throw the ball in this situation. Second and goal at the two. Bends over the top, he's close. But no signal. No touchdown. This is a trap. They're going to try and go right up the middle. You see, they're bringing Pierce along the trap, and, and Hampton just left everything and just went in the middle, tried to dive over. There was nothing there. This isn't a bad play for a play play. Third and goal at the one. guy not the strongest guy but you need a block in the goal line you knew how to get away you knew how to find 55 who was standing right in the hole and then put him in the end zone Dalloway so set to kick it off the ball has gone off the tee one time but this time he nailed it out of the end zone almost into the stands right now let's send you down to Leslie Visser can do it all. I mean, he can run, 
He can block. You look what he's done today. Seven dimes to the left, ten in the middle, four to the right. But this guy is also a tough guy. He's been replaced by Lincoln Coleman for the moment. Second and five. the yard. Stopped by Miller and Bailey. It's a little different when Emmett Smith isn't in there. You know, the umpire pad is the guy that lines up behind the defensive line. And Troy Aikman threw that one right at the umpire. Here's the umpire right here. The back Coleman comes out and gets right in front of the umpire. And the umpire has to dodge the ball. Watch Coleman coming here. And now he's going to come back there. And he just ducked right in time or he would have caught one in the year. He might be almost ducked into it. Third down. Aikman to throw it. Batted away. He was looking at Darrell Johnson. Keith Hamilton got a hand up. Keith Hamilton was saying yesterday that, that, he, that he takes responsibility for a slant. If there is going to be a slant to his side, he wants to get in the lane to take away the slant. The slant passes the outside receiver coming to the inside. So you see him coming, you get a push on the guy who's blocking you, then you get your hands up. And that hand up takes away the slant lane of the quarterback. John Jett, back to punt for Dallas. Not a good kick. Megan's going to let it bounce. And the Cowboys down it, and the Giants will take over at their own 31. 34 left to play in the third quarter. Only a 29-yard punt by Jet, but there's a flag on the play. Penalty marker down back at the line of scrimmage. And I think it's against the Cowboys. I think with that punt, it was only 29 yards. I think the Giants will turn this one down. They want the ball there. An eligible receiver down the field on the kick, number 58, kicking team. Penalty is declined. First down. First down for the Giants at their own 32-yard line, Megan. Dallas by six. One of the things that sets Mercury Villager apart from the rest of the minivan crowd is its unique sliding rear seat. For those occasions when you need more room, slide the seat forward. More room? Slide it forward to the middle seat. More room? Remove the middle seat and slide all the way up. And if you still need more room, call Milo. The Mercury Villager. All this and the quality of Mercury. Back at Giant Stadium. Pat Summerall with John Madden. The Cowboys 13, the Giants 7. Five and a half minutes left to play in the third quarter. Lawrence Taylor was explaining to Earl Leggett how Eric Williams got into him and how Emmett Smith got around him on that play. Lawrence was probably saying, hey, there should be someone outside me. And Earl was probably saying, you shouldn't let that big tackle hook you. To Hampton. Hampton moves a pile of Cowboys up to about the 38. I don't know what happened at halftime. I don't know about talks or anything, but I'll tell you one thing. He's taking it in there a lot harder and a lot tougher this half than he did the first half. And that blocking is a lot better by the offensive line. And again, sometimes you have to add the fullback to that. I mean, that was Jared Bunch there. Uh, you, know, you know, you get the line and the fullback like you do with the Cowboys. The line and the fullback control the first half for them. Second and six. No, oh, that's his helmet. I thought it was a ball loose. No, that's, that's the, the good <laughs> news when you can pick up the helmet and the, and the head's not in there. Jared punches his helmet. They are hitting. I mean, this, 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 this second half, this is a different half than the first half. I mean, watch Roberts pull again. It's that trap. He gets right in there behind Roberts and just drives and drives and drives. It was Jared Bunch's helmet that came flying out of there. There's Emmett Smith behind Mark Tune. They're going to measure this for a first down. And the Giants have it. I'll tell you one thing, 
I mean, this, this, this second half, this giant team is much, much more aggressive than they were in the first half. And, you know, there's no rule that just says that the only guys that can be aggressive are defensive guys and special teams guys. Offensive guys can be aggressive, too. And the Giants are showing it this second half. First and ten Giants at their own 42. Sam. Another first down. All the way to the Cowboy 45. Kevin Smith to the wrestling match with Callaway. There's Chris Callaway to the outside. And again, you're going to see him now. This is what they have to do. After they catch passes, they have to think of running with the ball. Get up the field. Make first downs. Make touchdowns. Make them, you know, miss tackles. Do those things. Don't just sit there and get tackled. Make some plays. Remember the last time down in Dallas, Callaway broke away. He was way in the open field. He turned back and, and waited for the tacklers yep. to come and get him. He still doesn't know what he did on that play or why he did on that play. First and ten, Giants. This is Hampton. Hampton at the line of scrimmage. Maybe lunged for a yard. For another NFL update, let's send you back to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Pat, we'll take it to the Silver Dome in Pontiac. Edgar Bennett, two yards. Watch the right side of the Packer line. Into the end zone. The Packers regain the lead. 17-13, third quarter, Pat. Dallas leading 13-7 at Giants Stadium. That's a big game. Detroit Green Bay, this is a big game. The Giants-Dallas. The winner of this game gets a week off. Second and ten. out of bounds, Jim Jeffcoat hit Phil Sims just okay. as he loaded. Jim Jeffcoat comes from this backside. I don't think Phil Sims, obviously he doesn't see him. He doesn't even feel him. I mean, he hit him right between the ones. What's it's, this now? Is his arm going forward? If his arm is going forward, it's an incomplete pass, and his arm was going forward. Eventually, he did feel him. But Jim Jeffco took an inside move on Jumbo Elliott, beat him to the inside, and put his helmet right in Phil Simms' back just as he was throwing the ball. The discussion here... It was a lateral. Out of bounds. It's third down at the out-of-bounds spot. With Pass this. rule backwards, making a, lat making a lateral. Let's see. But they're saying Jeff Code is coming from behind, and the, yeah, the, the ball is a lateral. Yep. See, it didn't go forward, the ball went backwards. So now it's the last one that has control of it. That was Phil Sims because the ball went out of bounds. So the Giants get the ball again where the ball went out of bounds. So that makes it third and 13. Jim Jeff Code hit him so hard he made a lateral out of the forward pass. Megan in motion. Throws to the left. It's him going deep. Has Howard Cross. Cross has it. Around the Hampton. Sorry. I saw the seven. It's Hampton. What a play that was. It's the old throwback. It's the roll left. They had Dave Megan block. They have Dave Megan come out and block. Watch it. Megan is going to come and block here. Sims is going to roll to this side. Hampton gets down to this side. Watch it come out here. Here's Megan. Boom. Right plays in there and that was one of them Dave Megan is a slot comes in motion double teams the defensive end Phil Sims a sprinter rolls out to the left throws back to Rodney Hampton way across the field to the right that's what you call a gadget a gadget that worked once they were saying let me have one more big game second and ten ten is Howard Cross. At about the 
well. Howard Cross is starting to be more of a pass receiver on this giant team, and Dan Reeves said next year he's going to be even more of a pass receiver. There he is on the left side of the screen, just working against the zone. He just goes up, does a little out. Just as he makes that out move, Phil Sims hits him. But again, the offensive line pad of the Giants has taken control of this second half. Third and three at the 12. Jackson in motion and Sims to throw. He does throw to Megan Jackson, who never saw it coming. and never looked back and the ball was there. Bill Sims had a throw it at that time. Watch Sims, it's going to be a slant. He's looking at Jackson. He throws it. It's thrown perfectly. It just looked like it hit him right in the shoulder pad. He just didn't pick it up coming at him. Treadwell will try for the field goal. He's 23 out of 29. seconds left to play in the third quarter. Dallas lead is three. Yeah, golf. Good ball. Golf. Yeah. Football. Let's watch both. Miller Lite presents full contact golf. Yeah. We're still on the first hole, Bob, and this Mark Jackson here on that last third down pass. It looks like a perfect pass by Sims. Jackson just wasn't ready for it. Just dropped the ball. Looked like he spun, and by the time he caught it, his eyes caught it, he wasn't ready to catch it. Daloiso has the ball blow off the tee. And he's back up to place it again. The last kickoff by Daloiso almost went into the stands behind the end zone. That reminded me of one of John Daly's drives. In fact, that's what Dan Reeves says, that Brad Daloiso kicks the ball off the way John Daly hits a driver. Anyone hold the ball though? No, when he hits a driver. No. The last time Deluisa kicked off, it went 79 yards. This one is deep as well. Over and out of the end zone again. Let's check on Emmett Smith now, and the Cowboys come back, and Emmett Smith is coming back. 13-10, Dallas leading. I think they probably just have someone that's going to keep an eye on Emmett Smith. I think if Emmett Smith is the type of guy, if you ask him, how are you, he's going to say, I'm okay. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. Can you go? Yeah, I can go. And because he is that kind of guy, someone else has to watch out for him. I want to be in the game. you got to get him out. I want to be in the game. He's going to tell you every time. Aikman. No attack. Couple of yards. Corey Raymond, good defensive play by the Giants. You know, there comes like three points. I think one is you have a healthy Emmett Smith, and then you got to worry about him. You have an Emmett Smith who's not healthy. He can be a decoy. You still have to worry about him because you don't know if he's going to come alive. Then you get if you get to a point where you know he can't do it anymore, then he can become a detriment to your team. I think they're at the second level right now. The handoff is going to end He gets outside the 25 to about the 27 before he's tripped up by Michael Brooks. One more play, perhaps, in the third quarter. You haven't heard Michael Brooks' name a lot. You know, he's the inside linebacker. He's really been the defensive leader of this giant team this year. Been injured just coming off a foot injury, but one thing he can do is attack the line of scrimmage, and it's tough to run inside when he's there. That is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Cowboys 13, the Giants 10. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. They've been pretty well in control of the second half. As you look at Russell Maryland, obviously he won't be back in the contest. Sprained his ankle. That's all the information we've been able to get. But he will not be back. You know, these fans here at the Meadowlands, they understand defense. They've known Giants for years in Giant defense. And look at them get excited now when that Giant defense is out there. On third down, Emmett Smith.
helmet's hurting. You can tell that, but he's still very effective. Yeah, he doesn't have the upper body. He's having a tough time playing with his upper body because of that shoulder injury, but he still has that power down below. I mean, this is a guy that can can make moves and 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 do all things, but it all starts here. You talk about power, watch this guy. Watch big Kevin Gogan. They start off on a double team. He just knocks this guy in his back. Intended for Urban. The only thing you can say about that is it was not thrown very well. But how about that block of Gogan? Yeah, oh, I mean, boy. I mean, that's, you know, when you get a guard, when you get two guards, I mean, that's one thing about the Cowboys. They have big old guards, Nate Newton on one side, Gogan on the other side. They weigh about 330, 340 pounds. And then you put those big tackles like Eric Williams, they weigh, you know, he weighs about 330 pounds. And they, it's tough to go around them, I and you know darn well you can't go through them. Second down. And that's where Emmett Smith hurt him. That we were talking about a guy can help you, a guy can be a decoy, but they expected him to block. Watch Emmett Smith here. They expect a block out there, and it's just too tough. I mean, they ought to switch and let the fullback do it. You see, he's trying to block right there on Hamilton. He couldn't do it, and Hamilton came up with a sack. So it brings up a third down. 16. 13.58 left to play. Take for the throw. Flag on the play. The pass is incomplete. He was juggling as he went down, Kevin Williams. But there's a penalty marker down. You know, and Michael Irvin is in there doing the talking. I don't think he's caught a ball in this second half. Illegal contact foul on the defense, five yard penalty, automatic first down. Automatic first down is the key. We see the throw out here, and we say that they had contact, I guess, before the ball got there. That part of it looked okay. I mean, I think the guy has to be able to go for the ball if that's what they call. What didn't look okay was those two Dallas receivers so close together like that. Yeah, anytime you see two receivers that close together, there's a mistake in the pass pattern, but I'm not sure exactly who they called that on because they didn't say, but that looked like a pretty clean end of the play. On first down, Lieutenant Smith, who broke one tackle, he chased and he gets out of bounds at the 40. You know, someone was talking to us the other day, John, about the fact that Emmett Smith uses his right arm more effectively than any runner they've ever seen. And that's a big handicap to him, not to be able to do that. Yeah, that off arm, you know, he puts the ball in one hand like he carries a ball in his left hand, then he uses that right arm, that right hand, just to knock tacklers off better than anyone. But, you know, you think of him, he's short, but he is so darn strong. I mean, in his upper body and his and his lower body, I mean, he is a strong, powerful man. Eggman is hit by Taylor. Also there, Mike Fox. That's the fourth sack by the Giants. Watch Taylor here. He doesn't always come to the outside. He also likes to stunt. Watch it, Fox starts to the outside. The, the Taylor starts to the outside. He just runs a right over Mark Tuane. I'll tell you, that is power. You know, you think he may not be as quick as he used to. He may not be as strong as he used to. But on that play, he just took Mark Tuane and put him right in the backfield and got the sack. Third and 12 and a Dallas timeout. They'll have two left. This is a football game. Oh, boy. We got it here. We can offer you this kind of salary, Tim, because our law firm is so successful. Good why, sir? Dallas at one time led 13-0. Now it's 13-10. Emmett Smith, 186 total yards. Yeah, but the Giants have taken things over in the second half. And the crowd...
against the champ defense. As Don Madden said a minute ago, they appreciate defense. Aikman back to throw. He gets it outside to Darrell Johnson. Then he stopped short of the first down. Clock will continue to run. Jesse Armstead, Meyer, and Guyton over to make the stop. Lawrence Taylor ball. on that play before made a big play. Then on this play, watch him here, Pat. He's going to come all the way in around here and get the pressure on Aikman back here. Watch him. He starts on that outside. Now you see him come to the inside, find the hole right there. See, and he made Aikman throw it before he wanted to. This crowd and this game have revitalized number 56. Well, you know, you always say, do you have one more in you? Maybe he's been saving that one more for this last quarter because he's made a couple of big, big plays there. The Giants have just taken their second timeout, so they only have one left. Let's watch Lawrence Taylor again, starting here in the outside, faking two and eight, making him take that block, then coming right up the middle. Aikman could see him because he was coming right in his face. This may or may not be his last year, but think of all the giant games over the years that we've done, Pat. And I don't know that oh. in my life that I've ever seen a more exciting defensive player than Lawrence Taylor. When he was at his best, you had to make it your business to know where he was at all times. You, know, you could go on a practice field or something. You wouldn't have to say which one's Taylor. You right. just walked out there. You could feel him. Jet back to punt. Megan standing back for the Giants at the 11. Jet's kick is a good one. They were almost blocked. Yep. Megan handled at about the 8, and he's cut down at the 11 by Brock Marion. So the Giants take over 12 17 left. could have had the 60-foot sailboat. The National Football League is sponsored by Hyundai, cars that make sense. Dean Witter, Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Duracell batteries, no other battery lasts longer. And by Little Caesars Pizza Pizza, where you always get two great pizzas for one low price. First and ten at the 11-yard line for the Giants. They trail by three. Hampton and Bunch behind Sims. Hampton. Hit by Norton. You know, remember they were taking Lawrence Taylor out, resting him a quarter here and there. Now he's not only rested in this game, Pat, but he's also on special teams. Watch him on that last punt. He almost blocked that thing. I mean, this play here, watch him, he comes to the outside, then he comes to the inside, and Jet just gets it off before he gets there. Yeah, he's and almost there. Block that. He's almost the only guy rushing, and he almost blocked it. Second and six. And it repairs incomplete. He just dropped it. Hey, Phil Sims is doing his part. Remember earlier, Pierce had that one, caught it, then he fumbled it. Now he throws the perfect pass to Pierce here. He dropped it. Earlier we saw that he threw a, a perfect pass to Mark Jackson, and he dropped it. Those drops are killing the Giants today. Eight out of 14, Sims, in the second half, two of five in the first. No interceptions. Third six. That's what you get for not practicing. You know, had that bad back. Number 94, defense, unabated toward the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, third down. See, what they do is they usually, if the guys come, here's Charles Haley here. Usually if the defense jumps, they let the play go, and the offense has a free play. 
But if the guy goes unabated, that's yeah. a new yeah. word, unabated, that's kind of too big a word. That's like mayonnaise. I mean, that's, that's the biggest word I know. But unabated, I guess, means if he goes unblocked, he's going to get a free shot at the quarterback. Then you blow the whistle, and that's what Jerry Marquez, the referee, did. Somehow I wouldn't associate unabated with mayonnaise, but it's a big no, word. It's a big word. Yeah. Here's Sims. Washington and Darren Smith made the stop. I'll tell you, this second half, Pat, these Giants are attacking. You know, instead of running a third down play and just running in there and maybe have to punt, they're going after it. I mean, they're coming back. Good pass protection. Boom, set up. Sims is crisp. He's sharp. He just zips that ball in there to Howard Cross. Hey, Phil Sims is throwing almost perfectly today. Almost like they can feel it. The lead coming in their direction, and the flags go down everywhere. And that's going to be on Aaron Pierce again. Although one man can be in Both motion. Starts. Number 61, offense. Prior to the snap, five yards penalty, first down. Aaron Pierce was the guy in motion, which was legal. The penalty was called on Bob Pratt. Sometimes you have double signals. You have a signal to start your motion, and then once in a while the guards will jump off when you're trying to start your motion. First and 15 now. Here's Sims. And Sims is in the arms of Jim Kipko. He's been very effective. And the only time that he really had problems is when, when they didn't get the protection. And most of the problem is coming from that left side. And it's been Jim Jeffcoat usually taking an inside move on Jumbo Elliott. Second down. They need 21. And Sims will try. Sims again is down. That was Jeffcoat again on Jeff Jumbo Coat. Elliott again. I mean, I mean, he just can't do it because Jeff Coat is just taking him. Watch, here's Jeff Coat. Here's Elliot here. He's just taking him and pushing him right into the backfield. Jim Jeff Coat's having a big game for the Cowboys here at the end. But see, Elliot has no power. And when, when he gets there, he just gets taken back. And Jeff Coat, you know, gets that good quick rush, gets him stood up, and then just pushes him right into the quarterback. Jeff Coat's a guy who's been at it a long time. And still getting it done. Third and 25. Here is Sims. And now, whistle blow. And a flag on the play. I'm not sure why yet. And then another flag came in late, Pat. The way of game. Offense. Too much Five time. Yards penalty. Third down. This giant comeback, if you go back to turnovers and how important they are, came uh, began when that ball bounced off Kevin Williams. And the Giants recovered after the Cowboys had blocked a punt. Played by Dave Meggett though, Pat, even though it wasn't a first down, they had so far to go, but that was the same play where Meggett would come in and block the defensive end, and Sims was going to try and get outside the same play he hit Hampton on. That time he blocked, then he saw Sims in trouble, he released, and Sims threw him the ball. 9.05. Left to play, Horan. Back to punt it. Had one partially blocked earlier.
Dallas will take over first and ten after a 33-yard kick by Horan. It began as a friendly game. Then it took on a life of its own. turn it up much more than they've turned it up here. The Cowboys 13, the Giants 10, but the playoffs start next week. You know, you're talking about guys playing hurt. Guys are really playing hurt today. You see Jumbo Elliott there trying to get his back loose enough. Emmett Smith in there with one shoulder. That's Smith, the ball carrier, stopped by Michael Brooks. Another guy playing hurt. Yeah, one of the things that they're really playing for this week is a week off. Of course, the team that wins not only has the home field advantage throughout the playoff, but doesn't have to play next week. The team that loses is going to play at home against the Minnesota Vikings, but they play it next Sunday. Second and seven, Michael Irvin has not caught a pass here in the second half. it to Michael Irvin. That will be enough for a Dallas first down at the 48. Let's again send you back to our studios for an NFL update. All right, Pat, at the Silver Dome, Eric Lynch, his second touchdown of the day from a yard out, has put Detroit back on top of Green Bay, 23-20 in the fourth. Meanwhile, the Miami Dolphins, they win. They're in the AFC playoff. They've tied New England 17 apiece. 12 minutes to play at Foxborough, Pat and John. Seven and a half minutes left here. You know, one way you get away from that too deep zone is run crossing pattern. That's what they did to Michael Irvin there. First and ten Dallas. A handoff is during the snap. And he hammers into giant territory. Tom and Bailey made the stop. You know, there's a certain intensity. You know, you talk about, you know, turning it up, and I think you have a, a level that they play in preseason, a level before Thanksgiving, a level after Thanksgiving, and a playoff level. Today, I think we're getting NFL playoff level football. Emmett Smith, 26 carries, 151 yards. Second half with a bad shoulder. Williams in motion. And Aikman to throw it. Outside to Smith. Every year, you know, you talk about Pro Bowl players and guys that didn't make the Pro Bowl. The Giants defense had an outstanding year, and probably the guy that had the best year of that defense is Mark Collins. He didn't make the Pro Bowl, and he and a lot of his teammates thought that he should have because he's not only a good cover guy, he's a good tackler. Here comes Emmett Smith out again. That's Michael Irvin on this play. Third and 11. Aikman pump fake. Aikman chase. Throws incomplete. For Harper. And the Cowboys will have to punt. He was trying to get the ball deep to Michael Irvin. And Myron Guyton and Greg Jackson had him double teamed. And he couldn't do it, so he had to come off it. You see Irvin here? You see he's running to the outside. Irvin was back on this left side. That's Harper there that they threw the ball to. Here's Chet. Back to punt and make it back deep. And he's coming out of it. And don't get there. High kick by Chet. Make it gets away from it. It takes a little giant hop. And another giant hop for the Cowboys down it. to play. Dallas has two timeouts left. The Giants only have one. 13-10 Cowboys. Today's game was produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. 
The coordinating producer of the NFL today is Eric Mann, directed by Larry Cavallino. Senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Doran, and the executive in charge of production is Rick Gentile. First and ten Giants. The ball's at their 17. They trail by a field goal, and Sims back to throw it. Got him. It's interesting that, that Chris Callaway, I think, has become Phil Simms' favorite target. He may have lost a little confidence in some of his other guys, but it looks like when he ever, when he really needs something now, today, the guy that he's going to is Callaway. He has five catches for 42 yards, second and one. Hampton behind Simms. Hampton gets the handoff and gets the first down to the 30. 77,430 in attendance today, the biggest crowd ever. I heard that they were outside today, they were climbing the fences trying to get in here. They were trying to sneak in, come in the back door, back gates, over the gate, anywhere. You don't see any empty seats and no one here is going to leave this one early either. First and ten, Mark Jackson has no catches in this half since Hampton. And whirls out to the 35, stopped by Ken Norton. Ronnie Hampton's running like a pro bowler now in this second half. He's not even worried about those blockers. You know, they have they have the traps and the and the guys coming across and stuff, and he's just taking that ball and just slamming it right up in there. Second and five. Giants in a hurry. 4-12 left to play. Dallas ahead by a field goal. Nudges ahead again. Tony Tolbert. The giant Pro Bowl selections. Sims, Elliott, Oates. Jumbo Elliott's been playing with a bad back for about the last two months. Clock running now. Lawrence Taylor. He's brought it back to the old level today. It's fun seeing him play that way. Third and one. Hampton is the runner. And he gets the carry. And he gets the first down. With Casillas draped around him. They'll move the sticks. You know, sometimes you see a guy that's just not going to be denied. And that's Rodney Hampton. I mean, watch him take the ball here and just run in there. He's just not going to be denied. I mean, whether if you have blocking, good. There's pretty good blocking. They pick off Norton there. They just give him a little crease. But Rodney Hampton was not going to be stopped before he got that first down. First and 10 Giants at their own 43. Hampton is again behind Sanders. And Sims will throw this time. He has Chris Callaway wide open. And Callaway gets to the Dallas 40. You know, with a score 13 to 10, we know that this is a regular season game, so there's just one period of overtime. And there's just one little thing here that no one's talked about. If this game ends in a tie, the Cowboys win. Yeah, and that's where, you know, they say the Giants didn't lose anything last week, losing to the Cardinals. That's what they lost. They have to win. They cannot tie. The Cowboys can tie. If there is a tie, you said, to the Cowboys of the champion. This is Hampton to the 35. Hammering on first down over his left side. Darren Smith came up to make the stop. This is football. Listen to this crowd. They're all oh. up. Woo! Two minutes left to play. Dallas leads by three. And Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. Two minutes left to go. Dallas leading 13-10. The Giants and Cowboys both only have one timeout left. Dan Reeves, no matter what happens, what a job he's done. Yeah, he and his staff this entire year coming in. George Young, the general manager. I mean, the job they have done of changing this team around has been outstanding. Second and five. That's 
Pierce in motion. This is Rodney Hampton. At about the 33. Everett and Kevin Smith came up to make the stop. Make the stop. It was a heck of a job by Thomas Everett because watch 61 crash. He's going to come out here and pull. You see, you get him. He's going to come right there. Boom. He picks off his guy right there. Jared Bunch gets a lead there, but they didn't get Thomas Everett, who was coming in from that backside. That makes it third and three. Washington, the safety man, the last man, made the stop. I don't know what Rodney Hampton did at halftime or what they said to Rodney Hampton, but I'll guarantee you this is a different guy in the second half that was out here in the first half. Watch him hit that trap here. You see the man blocking, the center gets his man, Cratch gets his guy. I'll tell you, they did an outstanding job. They just took took those two tackles the way they wanted to go. The center's right, right out there, boom, he gets Norton. And a big play and a big hole for Rodney Hampton. That's Thomas Everett. The injured cowboy, Rodney Hampton, only had 20-odd yards in the first half, 27, I believe. In the other championship game, Detroit, 30-20 to 20 over Green Bay. Thomas Everett leaving the field. He was the guy that made that tackle. Now again, the Giants have to be thinking here, taking time off, the, uh, time off the clock. There's a minute, nine seconds. They don't want the Cowboys to get the ball back again. They have to think of scoring a touchdown to win the game. But if they get to a fourth down, they still have to kick the field goal, even though that would give them a tie because we do have an overtime period, one period of overtime. First down, Giants at the Dallas 23. Jimmy Johnson didn't expect to be in this position. I don't think Dan Reeves did either. I didn't think either coach thought at the end of the fourth quarter with a minute left the score was going to be 13 to 10. One timeout left for both teams, a minute nine on the clock. Hampton again. And to about the 18. Stopped by Darren Smith and Rodney Hampton up in a hurry. You know, the scorekeeper, I think Pat was so excited, he forgot to start the clock. <laughs> Second and seven, the Giants in a hurry. Sims gives the Hampton and Sims down to inside the 15. Stopped by Leon Lent. 38 seconds left and Sims. takes the Giants last time out. Well, you see William Roberts there pulled and he missed a block and then Rodney Hampton had to do it on his own. You know, they've had 11 plays in this drive, Pat. Rodney Hampton has had nine of them. They said if we're going to win the game on this drive, we're going to do it to Rodney Hampton. Those the other two plays were those two passes to Callaway. And I think that in this situation here, they're going to have to come up with a pass. They have no timeouts left. Hampton just went over 100 yards on the day. Dallas has one, the Giants none in the timeout category. But you know, the way they've been running, the way Hampton's been running, they may try and pop something up the middle again. He's number 59, Big Williams, Brian Williams, he made a heck of a block on that last play, big run by Hampton. Third and two. Sims is going to throw it to Pierce. I don't think he got the first down. They don't have any timeouts. They got to get lined up. They have to get their field goal team on the field. They have time. Treadwell is already out there. He has made one from 29 yards. Down to 15 seconds. Just don't get into too big of a hurry. And now Dallas uses their last time out. I think that's an advantage to the Giants because I never like to run out on the field and kick a field goal without your guys getting set. Not so much for your kicker or your holder. 
but the guy that has to snap, you know, he wants to dry his hands. The guys that have to block, they kind of get their assignments down. The wings get down what they have to do. And so I think that Dallas taking that time out, I think, was an advantage to the Giants here. This will be from 31 yards for that man, David Treadwell, when the timeout is over. We were talking the other day. We haven't had an overtime game in so long. Looks like we've got one if David Treadwell can hit. It looks as if we'll have one. You know, it's kind of fitting. I mean, you could see this coming, yep. you know, that, that it was going to come down to the last game between the Giants and the Cowboys and what it all meant. And maybe it should come down to this. Moran holding for David Treadwell. And Treadwell's kick is good. It's 13-13. Could a regular season end any better than this? It couldn't. And this is football. I mean, this is, you know, not one team outmatched. These are two even teams. These are two teams that have played as hard as you can. Two coaches that have coached as hard as you can. Guys that have left everything they had out on the field. One's going to play next week and one's not. talking to Jimmy Johnson last night, he said it would really be tough to lose this game and come back and win next week. He said he doesn't know if he would be able to get his guys up again. And you can see why. I mean, oh, sure. both these teams have, have left everything they got, and the team that loses, I don't know that you can get it back in a week. See that it's shot so of Bill Sims there, how cool he was? So emotionally draining when you get yourself to a point like this and then lose. And then do you get back? Can you get back? Physically, maybe. Emotionally, I'm not sure. But I, on the other hand, it could be the lift that could lift the winning team right to the Super Bowl. I mean, to play a tough game like this and win this game, you know, that may be the thing that the winning team needs. Aloiso has the ball, pull off the tee just as he arrived. What would ha have, have you ever had that happen as a, as a kicker where it would blow off? Now again, if you don't kick it, there's no kick, but if you blow, if, if it starts to blow off and you hit it? It's a kickoff. I don't watch that thing. I mean, just boom, see before he gets there so he can pull his leg back. After that happened once, then they have to get a holder up there for him. here because of change of possession so that means there's six seconds on the clock the Cowboys are going to get one more play in regulation now the only thing here we know is they can go for some big play but the game cannot end or this period cannot end on a defensive penalty they're just going to run it out and send it into overtime take a look at the rules in overtime well they have a coin toss now then there's only going to be one 15 minute period now the teams use their timeouts already but now they both get two more timeouts and of course the first team to score wins the game now if no one scores in that 15 minute period of course then the game ends in a tie now, if it ends in a tie, the Cowboys win. The Cowboys would win the NFC East. Yeah, the Cowboys, in this period, can play for a tie. The Giants have to play for the win. Some facts about overtime. The teams that have won the toss have won 47% of the games. The teams that lost the toss, 46%. Let's listen. Jerry Mark Bright. This is the head. This is the tail. 
visitor will call the toss, call it in the air. It's heads, the Giants win the count. I'm surprised at those statistics we just had, that the team that won the toss in overtime doesn't win more often. Everyone talks about that, but it's about 50-50. Yep. 13, 13, and we're headed for overtime. What's in the back? What makes adrenaline flow, and to me it's always been finality. The largest crowd at Giant Stadium in the history of this place, and they're all still here. They picked the right contest, didn't they? If, if you're going to come to one, if you're going to climb over a fence and get a hole in your britches getting in, you better get a game like this. And again, the ball blows off the tee. We just set an NFL record, Pat, for balls that blow so. off tees. <laughs> But these soccer style guys put them on differently too. I mean, they got yep. the thing sideways and upside down, and look, they got to get it perfect in, you know, and tilted. And they got one white shoe, one black shoe, and the old days when you kicked was a lot easier. Oh yeah, if the ball blew off the tee, the coach chewed you out. It wasn't the wind, it was you. Murray's kick goes to Megan at the goal line. overtime will have first track well they started like this in the last drive to tie it up of course the couple passes to Callaway but the big thing was Rodney Hampton running with the ball Michael Irvin over there I think probably a little frustrated hasn't seen much action in the second half and in the last half hour or so the Cowboys haven't had the ball well you were talking about all those weapons they have but they haven't been able to utilize those weapons the best way to keep those weapons on the bench. Bell sends. Jackson in motion. Gives the hand and he has a collision behind the line of scrimmage and gets perhaps a yard. Tony Tober caused the collision. Rodney Hampton doesn't look tired. You know, you no. look at him, I was looking to see, you wonder how much more he has in his tank. You know, because he came out in really that third and fourth quarter. I mean, he, he played a bundle. But you wonder, you know, how he's going to do in overtime. If you just look at him there, he doesn't look tired at all. Second and nine. There is Sam. for the first down marker is about a yard short hit by Darren Woodson but that's a different thing in this game there's everything in this second half you know you don't see guys just running out of bounds you know or just get I mean they're they're stretching they're trying to get the ball they're trying to get another yard just everything you got you know if you got it in you you got to give it now third and one you would expect Hampton is a good tackle he's like a linebacker but Rodney Hampton really finished off this run starts with a good double team a good block in there and then Hampton just finishes it off over Woodson look at that hole he has there and he knows that he's going to put that licking on Woodson and get another yard and get that first down the Giants up there on 31 13 10 left in overtime sends again to Rodney Hampton his way for about three. Let and Dixon Edwards on the stop. Yeah, I think that, you know, you know, Rodney Hampton didn't make the Pro Bowl. He had the, the knee injury. Remember, he had the surgery and he missed some games, but I got this effort that, that he's had here, 30 rushes, 114 yards. The second half, I know one team he's going to make this year. But he didn't play in that first game against the Cowboys. Second down. Showing blitz, Sims back to throw, and the ball 
comes loose. This one goes forward, however, and a flag on the play. To see us hit Sims just as he let it go. This is going to be against the Giants, probably holding. Now you can see the way Phil Sims threw his hands down, the way Jimmy Johnson threw his hands backwards. You know that it's against the Giants. You don't know what it is. We have a personal foul, illegal chop block. Number 59, offense. 15 it's yard penalty. Against. 15 yard penalty. Second down. Brian Williams is 59. An illegal chalk block is when a guy has a guy stood up and he's engaged with one blocker and then you come in and chop him. Now you can chop him, but you can't do it if he's engaged with another blocker. So what happened is he was engaged with the guard and then Williams went to help him and chopped him. So it's second down and 22 make it. The Giants back at the 20-yard line. Megan just stood out wide left with McCaffrey. Here's the reverse to Megan who's going to throw it. Or start to, and now Megan's going to take off. And Jim Jeffcoat got him around the ankle. Did you check the balloon that blew into that play just I as it started? I saw the balloon going right by, and I saw Megan coming out of reverse, and he was trying to throw to Callaway. Here he comes here. Here's Callaway. That's the guy that they're trying to get to, but they didn't fool anyone. And there goes the balloon. Yeah, the balloon's right there in the middle. You see down here, see the good coverage down there? They covered Callaway right in here, so then Megan had a run with the ball. Third and 16, Maggot was tripped up by Jeff Coat and he was hurt, so the, Maggot has left. And the balloon just went around, across the goal line. The balloon is going in to be x-rayed. Well, you make it, you see it was his, his knee looked like he buckled under as he was being tackled. Overtime, 13 all. Time at Giant Stadium, 13-13, Dallas and New York. Third down, about 16. Maggot is coming back into the game. Yeah, yeah watch what happened, what happened, Pat. Yeah, this is. It looks like just as he goes down there, his foot gets caught and his and his knee kind of gets hyperextended. Ooh. Tripped up by Jeff Coat and another cowboy. These guys are. Are, are, are so strong it's just sometimes it's just amazing what their bodies can take and when you get in a in a point like this and a guy like Dave Meggett who's a big third down guy for the Giants he's not going to miss third down in overtime against the Cowboys for the championship third and 16 everybody was on side that time here's Sim and he's going to take off and he's going to be down at the 30 Darren Woodson with a clutch tackle. Again, the thing that Phil Sims wants to do here in the shotgun is you would like to get a completion, but the thing you don't want to do is you see here, everyone is covered. There's no one open here. There's no one to throw it to, so you don't want to force something in there. So if you're not going to force it, the next best thing is run as far as you can, punt the ball, punt the ball. away from it and it bounces down to about the 30. Whitmer downs it there, a 45-yard punt. Let's see if Emmett Smith is in the game and yes, indeed he is. Aikman just joined the huddle. First and 10 Cowboys at their own 25. Six times, 151 yards. And these fans were given a standing ovation for their defense. They want their defense to come up now. Eggman gets to Smith. Smith lunges underneath tacklers for about three. And he's going at about, well, maybe half speed right now. Speed, yes, but his arm is really bothering him. Detroit will host. 
they win the NFC Central. Second and eight. Here's Aikman. Drops it to Smith. Stopped short of the first down by Corey Miller. You know, Smith may only have one arm, but they're still going to him. Yep. They ran him to the right, and then they passed, and they threw the ball to him. But from here, he's in the backfield, lined up behind the tackle. He just circles out, and then comes in underneath. They hit that underneath pass again. That's one of their plans against that loose cover two, is to hit the underneath pass. Dallas will go with three wide receivers. And Novacek, third and two. Aikman will throw it. He gets it out to Emmett Smith, and he'll have the Dallas first down. Out to the 30, out to the 44. Talk about your tough guys. There's one. And, and then not only that, not only is he a tough guy, not only is he in there, but he's the go-to guy. John, you know that Jimmy Johnson and the Cowboys are aware that a tie gives them the championship and the week off. Is there any point in their mind that they play for a tie? Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and the way they do that is they just don't rush anything. They just want to keep their time, move the ball, keep it away from the Giants. Emmett Smith again. Smith hit down at the 45-46, slowly gets up. Although they would have a tough time running nine minutes off of the clock without scoring. Like if they keep moving the ball and they keep doing that, that they're going to score before time's going to run out. It'll bring up a second and eight situation. Now 8.40 left to play. Emmett Smith down on the sideline. He is hurting. Lincoln Coleman has taken his place. And you know, they have said to him over and over, hang on to the ball. a throw by Troy Aikman. That's probably why they're paying him $50 million. He was going to throw it to Lincoln Coleman out in the sideline, and he and he looked, and he looked, and he looked, and then he came back to Johnston. Watch, he's trying to hit 44 out there to the side. See him look there? Now watch him turn back. Zip right in there to Daryl Johnston. They'll move the sticks. First down. Enough on the completion. There was a penalty on the play. That was declined. And Dallas takes the first down. Aikman, 23 out of 29. Coleman is the deep back. And he gets the carry. Lincoln Coleman. To about the 45. Bailey and Brooks. Eight minutes left down overtime. 13-13, Cowboys and the Giants. And Emmett Smith is coming back in, you know. You know the go-to guys have always been Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin. I think Michael Irvin's only caught one pass his second half. And again, part of it is that coverage that the Giants use. But you would think the other thing is they ought to try and get the ball to him because he's their other big playmaker. The number one big playmaker is Emmett Smith, and he proved that today. There's Aikman. Him and Smith. Smith short of the first down by about a yard. And he gets up again in pain. Corey Miller made the stop. Emmett Smith ran what they call a choice round there. But if you watch the coverage, here's Michael Irvin out here. And now they're going to have bump him and then have the safety come over to this side. You see, and that's that's the reason they're throwing the underneath stuff. See, they've got the bump. The safety coming over, they really got two guys watching him all the time, and that's why Aikman's taking the underneath. Again, on third and short, they go with a short yardage formation. They give the ball to Smith, and Smith gets the first down. We're in overtime at Giants Stadium, 13-13. Football at the Giant 35. Emmett Smith was hurt earlier, his shoulder, right shoulder, but he's played with that pain with the exception of a couple of plays. Dallas has a first down at the Giant 35 in overtime, 6 14 left to play. First 
and ten. Novacek was the man in motion. Here's Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith hammers inside the 25. Stopped by Guyton. I mean, you know, I think, yeah, I think, Pat, you know, of all the games we've done together over the years, I don't know that we've ever seen two running backs have a better day and a tougher day. I mean, look at Emmett Smith, 30 rushes, 168 yards. Rodney Hampton, 30 rushes, 114 yards. I mean, I don't know that I've ever, you know, we've, we've seen one back have great days, but I don't know that we've ever seen, especially like these two guys have today. Here's Smith again. Over the left side, Smith scored the only touchdown. That was on a pass reception. Yeah, because in addition to, to what he's done on the ground, he's also caught 10 passes today for 60 yards, and like you said, the touchdown. Eddie Murray loosening up on the sideline. Clock running now. It'll tick down to about five minutes before they run another play. 13-13. The end of the year, Detroit beat Green Bay, so they won the NFC Central. The winner here wins the NFC East. made the stop. You know, and those people say that professional athletes are paid too much money and Emmett Smith gets too much money and he's overpaid. Got to get under those shoulder pads today yeah. and see who gets paid too much money. This is what great players get paid a lot of money for. Somebody else is going to have to pick it up because he's going to be sore. You talk about emptying your tank. We've seen Emmett Smith empty his tank before, and he really emptied it today. They're in the reserve. Third down, Dallas timeout. So they have one left in overtime, as do the Giants. Hey, drag racing! We want to watch the dog show. Okay, we can watch both. Sunday! Miller Lite presents the Wiener Dog Winter Nationals! Monkey vs. Dogzilla. And here they come, Bob. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste with less filling... Third down, the Cowboys have put the kicker, Eddie Murray, in the game. With Jay Novacek to hold, Murray is 2 for 2 on the day, along with 38. This will be from 41. You know, one of the advantages of going for it on third down, if anything bad happens, you still have the ball. The other advantage is the possibility of a fake, because if it doesn't work, you can still kick it again. They go a long time, timeout. Has been called by the Giants. Reeves, Dan Reeves yelling. He was yelling for that timeout. He wanted to do it, and, and now he's bringing his whole team over there because I think they want to talk about that, that, that you know, if, if they kick the field goal and it's good, they're going to lose the game. But by the same token, they know it's third down, that you have to be alert. You have to be alert for the fake field goal. So do you go all out and try and block the field goal, or do you play it safe for the fake? And that's the advantage of going for it on third down. Dan Reeves is saying to us, about the work that a head coach and assistant coaches have to do, have to put in to be in a position that they're in. But he said, there is no feeling of exhilaration like you get on Sunday afternoon. I'll tell you, the high of the team that wins this game is gonna be as high as you can get, and the low of the team that loses is gonna be as low as you can get. Murray's kick is high enough and long enough and right down the middle from 41 yards out, Eddie Murray. With 16 left in overtime, Eddie Murray wins it for Dallas. And they're the NFC Eastern Division champions. Now that picture, if you're a giant, says it all. Not for him, but for the player. That one. You know, 
one of those things at the end of a game like this, Pat, and you look at the guys and everything that they gave, you would like to say, you would like to say that it's too bad that someone had to lose. And that's the way you feel. I mean, these both these teams in this game gave everything they have. This was a professional football game. This is as good as you'll see it. Well, I mean, the emotion, yeah. the crisp, the tackle, the hard hitting, guys gutting it up, giving everything they have. Here at Giant Stadium, the final score then is Dallas 16, the Giants 13. Stay tuned for the NFL Today postgame show. Greg and Terry will have all the scores and highlights. You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Yeah.